Bonnie's Chiari story is unique as she underwent surgery and then was diagnosed in the 1970s. Her story and perspective are highly valued and emphasize the importance of community as well as research, education, and awareness. My Chiari story starts over 45 years ago. Um, it was 1976 and I was 14 and I, um, the truth is my original symptom, I didn't even really think was a symptom. I have rotary nystagmus where my eyes twitch and my mother noticed it um, at the breakfast table. They, they took me to the eye doctor um, and he was concerned and said it was a symptom of a brain tumor, which sent me to a neurologist. Um, and the neurologist did the basic workup that um, probably everybody who's ever been to a neurologist has gone through the touch my finger, touch my nose and walk on your heels and your toes and all that stuff. And he said everything seemed perfectly fine. And then the headache started and then the dizziness started. And then as far as the nausea went, it was pretty weird because every time I would sneeze, within seconds after sneezing, I would throw up and I couldn't stop it no matter what. I tried so many different tactics and uh, nothing helped. So anyhow, this was going on. The headaches were excruciating, absolutely debilitating. And my parents kind of felt that I was probably scared because the neurologist had said that my eye movement was the sign of a brain tumor. Then there were the recommendations that I needed psychiatric treatment. And, and so there was discussion of that. But then my mother, <laughs> this, was, this was decades ago, my mother you know, was like, no daughter of mine is going to shrink and you know that kind of stuff. And it was just really a nightmare. I um, woke up one morning and I was just, I do feel like I was maybe on the border of losing my mind because it was so awful. And I went into my mom's room and I begged her to take me back to the doctor. Um, I said, I just couldn't go on like that. And so she finally agreed and they took me to my pediatrician and my pediatrician took one look at me and knew something was going on. And the weird thing is he was very kind. Um, he put me on Valium because he said I was a nervous wreck, which I was. And he said, I want you to take this for a week and then come back and let's see what symptoms you're still having after you're more calm and relaxed. Um, and so the Valium did help me a little bit to settle down somewhat, but I was still having all my symptoms. I still was throwing up and having headaches and all that stuff. And I came back to him and that's when finally my parents realized that there's something wrong. They ordered a CT scan and, and there were no MRIs back then. They ordered a CT scan and it showed that there was some abnormality, but they had no idea what. And it started this journey um, that uh, my, my mom had a friend who had a connection to Mayo Clinic. And long story short, they got me into Mayo. And when I got to Mayo, they did all sorts of wonderful tests again because there were no, no MRIs. Um, we did angiogram and myelogram and oh my gosh, the tests were horrible for someone who's throwing up and dizzy all the time as it is and has headaches. They were just awful spinal tap. Um, the whole story at Mill Clinic, I could just, that alone, I could write a book about. Eventually after running all these tests, um, they saw that, um, I had hydrocephalus. They, they knew that was going on and there were what they said it looked like you know, shadows around my medulla oblongata, the, the spinal and my spinal cord. Um, and they thought I had a brain tumor and they told my parents that they were quite sure I had a brain tumor. And not only that, they told my parents that they, unfortunately, based on what they saw, felt that it was probably malignant. Monday came and, um, they did the surgery and my greatest fear, again, I was very naive Cancer never entered my mind. I don't know why, but it just didn't. Maybe it was a protective mechanism. Um, I was afraid of becoming paralyzed. Um, brain surgery, just that scared me. Um, anyhow, I, I remember them, you know, putting me under, telling me to count backwards. And I think I counted, you know, to 97. And then I opened my eyes 
and looked at them and said, aren't you going to put me to sleep? And they were telling me it was all over. And um, <laughs> it just was amazing. And my doctor, my surgeon, had a smile on his face from ear to ear. And he said, you did not have a brain tumor. He said, you had what is called an Arnold Chiari malformation. And so this was 1977. And he said, it is extremely rare. But he said, we were able to fix it. And he said, um, we've only ever seen seven cases of this in the history of Mayo Clinic. Um, and so um, that started my road to recovery. I instantly felt a million times better. I did not. They told me I was going to probably have a whopping headache for a while. <laughs> Compared to what I'd been living with, it was nothing. I, I felt so much better. Um, and so that started, you know, my road to, to recovery. And um, it, it's weird because, you know, they didn't know a whole lot about Chiari. And I mean, they still don't, but they knew so much less back then. They, they said they fixed it. Um, which we now know, you know, doesn't really exist. They definitely helped a, a lot. Um, I asked if it was hereditary and they said no. And um, my daughter has Chiari. And in my 30s, I started having more dizzy days. And um, that just continued. And then in my 40s, I started developing pain in my ear and my tongue. And it was like sharp stabbing pains. I said it felt like somebody was sticking a screwdriver into my ear. Um, and again, that took quite a while to diagnose. I went, I actually ended up getting, um, having a spinal fusion. And um, uh, they had done, my original surgery, they had done a laminectomy of cervical one, two, and three um, for the decompression surgery. And they um, now, when I'm in my 40s, they um, they did a MRI of my spine and uh, saw that I had spinal stenosis. I still read about people who are told that this is all in their head, that they're making it up. Um, uh, and and I've heard stories about people who do get diagnosed with Chiari, yet they're told that Chiari isn't causing them their problems. Um, all of the all of the ways that people are so dismissed um, is just so upsetting. Um, oh, Chiari can't cause that. Oh, Chiari, yeah. And we're finding out more and more things that Chiari is linked to. Bonnie has recognized small yet significant advances happening in the medical field and understands the underlying significance of spreading awareness to better the lives of others who are or have yet to be diagnosed and echoes that we are never alone in our fight. When I was a teenager, I thought I was the only one in the world, you know, who had this and going through and the things that have changed too, like when they, they shaved almost all my hair off and I have hair down to my waist. Um, they shaved almost all my hair off when I had my surgery. And of course now I see, you know, people post their pictures and I see that, you know, they just do a smaller section. I think it's wonderful that we can connect with one another and share experiences and know that you're not alone and that you're not the only one going through this. And if you do, I mean, I've seen, I've read stories um, where people have talked about some of the ridiculously awful things that doctors have said to them, and then they ask for advice. And personally, I think it's a wonderful forum to be able to say, you need to find a different doctor. There is support out there, which is so helpful. And you have to be your own advocate because nobody will fight for you like you'll fight for yourself.